and spent my growing up years until I was 19 years old, I went off to pharmacy school. And when I was in pharmacy school, the Vietnam War was hot and heavy. And by the time I uh, was in my last year of pharmacy school, they were sending more boys to the Vietnam. And so I'd been deferred with the draft because I was in college. Ah, I see. But the pharmacy degree program was a five-year program, so I, I got deferred a fifth year. So you got to still use your talents in the military, correct? So what happened, yeah, I'm going to tell you about it. What happened was that uh, I knew I was going to be drafted. And as I tell my students in pharmacy school as I was teaching, I avoided the draft. I volunteered. And I volunteered when I learned that the Navy was going to add more pharmacy officers. They were adding 60. And when I found and that out... was one of the ones that got lucky enough to get on that pick. We found out early. Good for you. Six boys out of my class... Good for you. ...got one of those positions. We got 10% of the positions out of the University of Tennessee. Good for you. And a kid from Rutherford, who was a year behind us... What was his name? Doug Duncan, Duncan's Pharmacy. Okay, Duncan's Pharmacy. Really good friend of mine, Doug, our drugstore. I got you. And uh, it's right there on, a, you know, old 45, not on the bypass going through town. And right. Dyer. But uh, he and I have reconnected since we've moved back. Sure. And uh, he was telling me that when he was graduating, he applied for the Navy, too, and there were three positions for pharmacy. Wasn't well, near as many positions, was it? He got one of those three. Oh, he did? Yeah, he did. Did you know Mr. Van up here, Martin? Oh, yeah, Van Swain. Uh -huh. I taught his son. You did? Van was originally from Greenfield. Jason, his son, Becky Caps. Yeah. I was. I played football with her brother, Don. Okay. And You knew Don Caps? Of course. You know what Don Caps is doing now? No, he had been superintendent of schools at Sharon, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, now he's up there in Fulton. Now he's principal up there in school. Is he? Yeah. And Coleman Hamlin. He's made a good living for himself yeah. in the school industry. Our um, our home, we had lived on 40 acres, and we had hogs and cows. We had a little farm, and we were on Highway 89 between Sharon and Dresden. And it's just about a half a mile from the railroad. From the railroad? The railroad goes through town. Okay, you was right there in town then. Just beyond, just where the cropland started. I got you. Ours were the first. Was you on the right or the left? On the right is a brick house on a hill. Okay, there's Before a. Before you went down. There's a nice house over there right now on that same side that you're talking about that's got some antique rakes and antique plows and some stuff. He keeps his yard looking to mint. I mean, and he's got, a, he's got a circle drive. Uh huh, got a circle drive. And it's on a rise. That's correct. That's the home that my, my is dad. Is that your old home? My dad and mother built that house in 1950. That is a probably one of the beautiful places in, in it, Sharon. It was lovely. It was lovely. So I lived there, went in there, moved there before I started first grade, and lived there until I headed to Memphis to pharmacy school. Who was the main banker right there in Sharon? Wasn't it? Wasn't it a. A Robertson? Robert, uh, Robert Short Roberts. Robert Short Roberts, that's and right. He's a relative. He and, is. And then Miss Gertrude Hahn worked in there, and also Russell Fisher. Right. And Russell Fisher replaced Mr. Roberts as the president of the bank. That's correct. And Russell Fisher's son, Joe, was in my class in high school, and then we went down to pharmacy school. But together. I can't believe it. You went to Sidonia School. Oh, I didn't. I went to Sharon. Oh, you never did go to site on the elementary school? No, but the, when they closed it, a boy by the name of Billy Sims came I know up and joined us in the fifth grade. Okay. I know and Mr. Sims. He turned into a farmer. Yeah, and he right there at the place where he grew up. His daddy was Wilburn Sims. That's right. His mother was Juanita. That's right. And uh, his sister was Judy. That's right. The reason I know this stuff so, about so many names when I was 12 years old, my dad put me to work in the grocery store. Over at IGA? In Sharon? It became an IGA. At that time, it was Robert's Grocery. Okay. And uh, his, his bag boy and his delivery boy had quit. They'd had a disagreement. 
and it was in July. And he my, he was diabetic. When he'd come home, mother fixed three meals a day for him, breakfast, lunch, and supper. So he'd been home for lunch, and while he was there, we had he had broadcast some purple hole peas whenever we were doing the last cultivation of the corn. And he stopped by and he checked his pea patch. It was about four or five or six weeks later. And when he got there to the lunch table, he told my older sister and myself, those peas have come in now, children. I want you to go down there and pick them right after lunch. And I bet they flew in there at them, didn't they? We went down there. We had some burlap toe sacks in the garage. We walked down there and we... we Unknown caller. It is time for me to take this call. Go ahead. Beg your pardon. You're not going to hurt my feelings a bit, sir. Hello. Speaking. Go right ahead. None. A little bit. I had a little bourbon last night. No, it happens about uh, three or four times a week. Okay. Uh, do you ever have six or more drinks at one time? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, nothing like that. How many drinks do you have at one time? Like one. I had one last night. There's sometimes I, I, I have a second, but okay. not every night. Really? No, uh-uh. No, I'm, okay. I know better. I smoke a cigar every now and then. Okay. Uh, when I'm outside, when I'm mowing the yard. Okay. How long have you used tobacco? You mean a cigar? Uh, any tobacco throughout your whole life. Have you ever smoked before that? Whenever I was in college, I every now and then I'd buy a pack of cigarettes, but it wasn't regular. And then, uh, okay. uh, and I'm a pharmacist, so I, I, I learned a lot more about the uh, consequences of tobacco use. But then... When I started mowing my yard uh, back in 2009, I would buy a package of cigars and I'd mow once a week and I'd have a cigar. <laughs> okay. All right. This is the VA uh, primary care clinic. Sure. Jennifer. Go ahead. I was speaking, uh, sharing some information with this gentleman that I'm visiting with right now. Now, is Miss Davis going to come on the line just as, whenever you finish talking to me? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I probably need to excuse myself from having this wonderful conversation with this gentleman, but I, I need to excuse myself and go over to the car and, and take that take that call. So let, let me do that, all right? Well, don't disappear because I ain't through talking to you okay. yet about some of my people. Okay. But but go ahead and feel free. Go ahead and take I, the I'm call. Gonna just, I'm going to sure. just sit in the car. Privatize it. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Yes, sir. No problem. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. The odds of somebody like this driving up and sharing old remedies of past is about slim to none. I'm going to get involved in asking him some more questions about my people and uh, who all he remembers and stuff like that. Just reminiscing about the past which uh, I think it's good to stay in contact with people, people that uh, you know as well as people that you don't know, because it helps to broaden your horizons on what, what has occurred, when it occurred, who it occurred with, and the prospects of looking at the future, because if, if a successful person such as this individual can pull up and just start talking out of the blue, um, odds are um, other people can can uh, make a success out of their lives too as well. He seems to have a really good head on his shoulder. I'm sure he does with him being involved with the uh, pharmaceutical community. But I'm going to get back. This will be part two of this particular conversation. Part three will be momentarily. Thank you for listening. God bless.